Hi friends, it's Kim from Bloom Home and Garden. Thanks so much for stopping by. If you are new here, please, we would love to have you to subscribe and come along with us on our journey of life in this 1860s farmhouse. We are homesteaders and just getting started and a lot of DIYs rehabbing this home so there's a lot going on and we'd love to have you along today we're going to talk about chickens and you know that is my favorite subject and we're going to talk about raising chickens 101 this is going to be pretty basic because there's a lot of things i wish i would have known when i got started i know i walked into tsc i wasn't expecting to take home chickens i was just there for a part with my daughter and i ended up bringing home chickens and in the years that i've had chickens there are so many other things i wish i would have known and i would like to share them with you to help you if you're getting started on your life that journey. Before I dive into the video, I'd like to take a moment and just talk about something dear to my heart. And that is, um, we could just consider this a little public service announcement because 70% of my own flock has been rehomed. And that is the fact that I have taken them in from other individuals who didn't want them anymore. And it's the same story most of the time. They get them in the spring and they're cute little fuzzy creatures and then they start growing. And just like the puppy at Christmas time, soon they take a lot of care and they're not as fun and nobody wants to take care of them. When we think about where these little animals come from, and I'm talking about chickens and turkeys, ducks and baby bunnies, they are, are available at your local farm store. And they are there for the purpose of people who are farmers and homesteaders and raise them for purposes. They may raise them for eggs, they may raise them for meat, and they may raise them for breeding purposes. And also kids who do 4-H have a certain timeline of when they pick up their animals to work with them to have them ready for a fair time and selling them and uh, getting them judged. So that is why they're at the farm stores. And I know that Easter kind of correlates with spring. And I know somehow that fuzzy little bunnies and chickens correlate with Easter. But these are not animals to be bought and put in Easter baskets. Guys, these are for farm and agricultural purposes. So um, there is a lot, and, and that's what this video is about, to help explain some of the things that go along with raising chickens so that you can be fully prepared before you bring home chickens so that you can be ready and give them a good life and not have to rehome them in a few weeks when you realize what actually goes on with raising chickens. So with that being said, let's dive into this video and talk about raising chickens. I first got chickens. I walked into TSC and I was totally unprepared. I was actually there with my daughter. I knew I wanted chickens. We had just bought a property. And where I live, and that is the first thing you must be sure of, is what are your local laws and ordinances? Now where I live, you have to own three acres of property in order to have chickens. There is no limit, but you have to have three acres to own them. Now. I know a couple county overs, they can have backyard chickens, but they are allowed four hens, no roosters, and they must be clean and maintained at all times. So it's different everywhere you go. So be sure when you are looking for a piece of property to homestead or uh, to start getting livestock that you know what the laws are. It is very heartbreaking to get things and get attached to them and have to give them away and then be stuck with this property where you can't realize your dreams. So make sure that you know that first and foremost so that you don't have to sacrifice your dreams of homesteading. Number two. What are your purposes for getting chickens? Now chickens, if you're just starting this adventure, chickens are great because they are small. They don't take up a lot of space. Of course, that makes them cheaper to raise and they give back. They can give back in egg production, which you can eat the eggs and you can sell the eggs. And they are a good meat source as well. And so first of all, you have to decide what kind of livestock you want, what is the purpose of raising chickens or turkeys or ducks or what have you, and figure out what you want before you go shopping. Number three, know that there are certain breeds for certain reasons. Like I said, when I went, I was so excited. I brought home six baby chickens. And then as time went by, I was adding to my flock because I didn't get the things that I thought I needed. I was just excited to get chickens and 
I had chickens and then I realized well I wanted chickens for this purpose and I wanted chickens for that purpose and you have to understand our, if you have a family and your children are going to be partaking in part of the chores then you want to get chickens that are fairly docile and family friendly because some don't have that personality and some are much quieter. Do you want egg production? Because some chickens lay a lot of eggs and some chickens do not. For instance, everyone wants the Americana chicken and they're the ones who lay the colored eggs and they range from light green to blue. And they often call another breed of that chicken Easter eggers because they lay those colored eggs. However, those chickens don't lay very often. Another important thing to think about is what do the chickens look like when they grow up? I know when you're standing at the store and you're looking in at all those baby chicks and they're so sweet and they're fuzzy yellow and there's a few black ones and you get them, you don't know what color they're gonna look like when they grow up. And so when I got chickens, I realized later as I seen my little six red chickens cruising across the landscape that I wanted more color and so I was able to get more color because like I said a lot of people contacted me who didn't want their chickens and so I ended up with some black jersey giants who are black and I ended up with some barred rock and some um, which are the black speckled but when they're babies they're just a different color and I also got some buff orpingtons and um they are slightly yellow when they're babies but they grow up to be much more of a blushy orange color so if you want to see what your chickens are going to look like when they're older it is best to do some research because when you get to the store a lot of them are just that cute little fuzzy yellow well guys, I thought it'd be so much fun to bring you out to Tractor Supply with me and look at the baby chicks. And I'm so happy they put these signs up. But when you get here, you're going to see chicks in all kinds of containers. And um, they're going to look like this. And they're going to be just varying degrees of yellow and black. Because that's what they look like when they're babies. Even the Rhode Island Reds are yellow. Leghorns are yellow. Barred Rocks are black. Australops are black. And um, the Buff Orpingtons are yellow when they're babies. There's really hard to tell the difference when they're that size. Also, you're going to see that they need a lot of care. You're going to see that their bedding is really clean, and, and that takes a lot of work to keep it clean. They absolutely have to have a food source at all time. They have to be fed and watered constantly, and it's very important. And then you've seen in some of my other videos how much cleaning there is to do, and um, in the wintertime, I haul water in buckets to get to my chickens. So they are a lot of work, but all worth it for sure. I love taking care of my chickens. Um, but going in, you should see how much work there is. And now that you can see that they're just mainly these different shades of yellow and black, um, you're probably wondering, how do you know what they're going to look like when they grow up? Well, I'm going to help you. I'm going to take you on a tour around the barnyard and I'm going to show you a few of the chickens that I have and their breed. So We're going to start with the Isa Brown. The Isa Brown is the most common chicken that you can pick up um, from farm stores. They are fuzzy yellow when they're babies and they are a great bird. They are very friendly. They are very docile. They're also called the common red because there are so many of this chicken. And they are a great meat bird. They are a great dual purpose bird. They lay a lot of brown eggs. And then we have the barred rock. Now when this one's little, it just has a little yellow dot on its head and it grows up speckly, but she is a good egg producer, very calm, friendly, great for dual purpose. The Jersey Giants are also great. They are a bigger bird, but they are so very quiet and very calm. They are good mamas too. Mine have gone broody every year and they are just great mamas raising those chickens. My white Leghorn uh, lays a white egg. Helen is very calm and she doesn't lay as often as the other ones, but if you're looking for a white egg, she does. Now we have the black Australop. They are a moderate egg producer. And this Bantam, this is Becky, and she's very small, but very hardy. And when we got her, 
Uh, someone found her walking down the middle of the street in the city. And of course, there's no chickens in the city. And they brought her and she's so tiny. And I said, oh, we cannot put her in with my chickens because they're so much bigger. And they said, oh, no, no, you have to understand. A bantam, she will have a little bit of an attitude. She will definitely hold her own. And she has. And she is right in there with them. And she has a little white egg. But when you crack it open... The egg inside is just about the same as a normal egg. I'm always surprised by that. And uh, she's just a sweet girl. So bantams are a fun hen to have. This is Gertie. She is our Rhode Island Red. She is pretty chatty. And uh, they are also a good a dual purpose bird you can have them for egg production or meat production she does lay a lot of brown eggs and she was the surrogate mother to our buff orpingtons last year and this is emma our buff orpington very quiet uh, great egg producer and they're also dual purpose birds because they are pretty meaty and right now our Gracie who looks just like her is in the hen house being broody you know we just got Oliver a rooster and uh, so maybe we're gonna have some baby uh, chickens in there now this is our copper moron she is pretty flighty and uh, although she's hardy and a great egg layer she's very loud this is Anna our Americana very, very quiet. She is my quietest bird, and she lays a blue egg. This is our other Americana. This is Elizabeth, and she's also very calm, very docile, very sweet, uh, a great family bird. But neither one of these girls lay a lot. They lay the blue eggs, but they only lay about one egg a week. And then we have our Amber Link. This is Lily, and she is so docile and friendly. And they are good foragers. We have two or three of these, and they love to forage. Important tip I'd like to share with you is that these baby chicks will take about four to six months to start laying eggs. So when you get chickens, it will take them a good time to be mature enough to lay eggs. And during that time, they need the best nutrition. Several of our chickens that we got were the same age as the chickens that I had got in the spring, but they were so much smaller and they were just so tiny and I was afraid to pick them up because I was afraid that perhaps their bones might break. They were not allowed outside and they were only fed a diet of scratch grains and that is not enough for growing chickens. So make sure that you research and pick the best food for your chickens. And if you are doing meat birds, they need a totally different kind of nutrition. So make sure when you know which bird you want and the purpose you're gonna use them for that you're able to pick the right quality food. My last tip has to do with something I get asked all the time. And so I wanted to be sure to include it in this video, especially if you're just starting out. Now. You heard me talk about straight run chickens, and that is you just get what you get. They're a combination of male and female. Now, when you're bringing them home, you have to decide if you want a rooster. A rooster's job is to fertilize the egg. But the question that I get all the time is, will the chicken lay eggs without a rooster? And the answer to that is yes. A chicken is designed to lay eggs no matter what. And a hen, which is the girl chicken, will lay her eggs and the eggs will come plentiful and be very nutritious. The rooster's job is to fertilize that egg so that if the hen decides to go broody and sit on her nest for the 21 to 28 days it takes to hatch an egg into a chick, that is his purpose. So if you are not planning on hatching eggs at home, then you probably don't need a rooster. Roosters eat and they crow, they make noise, they can become aggressive, and sometimes they are pretty aggressive with your hens. So keeping that in mind, also, depending on the size of your flock, you have to be careful with how many roosters that you get. So you may want to be sure to be looking for breeds that go broody, and that means that they're going to sit on the nest. 
I have had every year a Isa Brown and a Black Jersey Giant go broody every single year without fail. And when I looked them up, they weren't the most likely to go broody, but they are and they were excellent mothers. And I am going to do the funny broody hen story and I am going to post it as my next video. So if you want to hear a funny story about the broody hens, make sure that you watch the next video after this one. Well, I just want to thank everyone for coming along today. I had a lot of fun filming this video for you and I hope that you got some good inside information on what kind of chickens to select for your flock. I hope that it answered some questions and gave you some food for thought and got you thinking. And I hope that you'll follow me over on Bloomwell Home and Garden on Instagram. I would love to have you take some pictures of your chickens and tag me over there. I love chickens and I love all the different breeds and I can't wait to expand my flock. I hope Oliver does a good job and we get lots of different little chickens. Until next time guys, be blessed and be safe. And I want to take one more moment to give TSC a shout out and a thank you for allowing me to come out and film there for this video. I am very grateful for that opportunity. Thanks so much Tractor Supply and everybody have a great day.